Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. We have got a fun collaboration for you for this video and this is myself with textures. So I've got my brand textures here along with the design team member for Helen Griffin's Simply Made Crafts and that's Vicky Bunn. Now I've really loved everything that Vicky makes for a while now and I thought it'd be really, really good fun. The reason we're doing this is because there's a bit of a celebration. If you're a Craft Stash VIP member, we're spending the entire week celebrating Simply Made Crafts. There's lots of offers on, there's lots of different video tutorials as well and deals for you to take advantage of. If you're not a Craft Stash VIP um, member, you can go and sign up for that. It's 9 99 a year, um, no auto renew, and you get all sorts of different uh, benefits like this, like the offers. But what Vicky and I have done is not only have we come together to join Textures and Simply Made Crafts, which I'll talk about in a moment, we've also got you an offer code and you can use that offer code at Craftstash, that's uh, .co.uk and .us as well. And you can get 20% off any Textures or Simply Made Crafts products for this week, the entire Simply Made Crafts VIP week. Now you don't have to be a VIP member to take advantage of this code and the code is down in the description. Also in the description, I'm going to have linked all the products that I'm using also. So not only can you pop over and find them quickly, you can also then put in the code at checkout and get 20% off. If you're a VIP member, you'll then also get an additional 10% off after that discount has come out too. So hope you enjoy this video and what we both make. Don't forget to pop over to Vicky's YouTube channel, which is again, linked down below and see what she's made combining again textures and simply made crafts. So these are going to be the main items that we're going to be working with both of us together. It's going to be really interesting to see how we combine these and hopefully make something very different. So we're going to both be working with, as it's Simply Made Crafts week, with the notebook cover die set from Simply Made Crafts. Um, there's lots of these still in stock, you can find them. It's fantastic for keeping things like travel journals in. You'll see as I make it, you can actually fit three little notebooks inside. You could actually even make it into kind of like a gift bag and things like that, but I'll discuss that while I'm working with it. Now, we're also going to be both using some of the Creative Craft products fabric paper. I've gone for gold. I believe Vicky, um, while she was planning, she was talking about going for the silver one. Um, the, you've got both available on Craft Stash. Now, what's really fun is that if you are a Craft Stash VIP member, you're going to be able to take advantage of a bundle, which is this notebook die set, the gold and the silver fabric paper, and you'll get, uh, essentially you'll get one of the fabric papers for free because the bundle offer takes off the price of one of the fabric papers. You'll find that in the VIP area on Craft Stash. And if you are interested in joining the VIP membership over on Craft Stash to take advantage of things like this, um, that is linked below, but it's www.craftstash.co.uk forward slash VIP, or the same for the US site as well, just forward slash forward slash VIP on the end. So fabric paper, just in case you've not seen it before, is it is a paper, it's like a thin cardstock. Um, it's actually quite a good weight. I'd say probably once you've got the, this finish over the top, you're probably looking at about 250, 280 GSM between those two. Um, like I say, I'm working with the gold. There is a craft version as well, and there's a silver version, which Vicky is playing with too. Um, so with this, it's fabric paper, so you can actually wash it and wet it, and you can scrunch it, and you can tear it, and you can die cut it, and you can do so many different things. But then the beauty of it is you can adhere it just like paper or cardstock. It's fabulous. You've got six A4 sheets in each pack as well. So I'm going to be using this as the main base for my notebook cover. I'm not sure how Vicky's using hers. It'll be really interesting to see how uh, or what she does with hers. Um, but I'm also going to tone it down a little bit because it's a lovely gold, but I'm going to be working with these, I'll just show you a sneak peek, these colors here. So I've got a deep blue, kind of like a navy blue. I've got a burnt sienna sort of color, terracotta, orange color, and then I've got a pale, a blush pink too. I love that color combination, it's quite different. Um, and I thought it would work with the gold, but the gold might be a bit a little bit overpowering. So I am going to tone it down a little bit with some different painty techniques on this paper. Now, uh, lastly, what we also agreed to bring into this collaboration and both work with is elements from my floral folk art collection from Textures. Um, this is the flora and fauna set that I'm using for my flowers. As you can see, I have already made these up because they're a little bit time consuming. Really good fun to sit and make, very therapeutic. Um, I might, I may or may not bring in some of the butterflies here. 
and I've also got one of the embossing folders. This is my favourite embossing folder from the collection. Again, everything's linked down below. So let's get on with making this project. The first thing I'm going to do is take one of these sheets of fabric paper and I'm going to use the die. I'm actually going to cut out the notebook cover. I'm going to cut two of these from the gold. Now these are a larger die, as you can see in the pack, they're quite large. You're going to need your larger die cutting machine for this. So um, ideally something like a Big Shot Plus, kind of sort of your A4 letter size base machine if you've got one. You can see the size there. So if I put this against, um, let's just take my normal size Big Shot plate so you can see how much larger you would need it there see it won't it's the width that it won't go through you can barely see that there there we go okay so you need another kind of almost an inch on the width of your normal big shot plate so I'll get these cut out and then we'll come back and start decorating so I've cut two of uh, the main die here and I'm going to be adhering these together through the center now what's really interesting is as i was cutting these i found out two things about working with this fabric paper that i thought i'd share with you so one of them is that you can easily peel off um, the gold coating if you want to now it's not something that's going to come off if you uh, create a card with it or a mini journal like me and you accidentally scratch it it's not going to come off that easily but if you want to take the coating off it's actually really simple simply with some sticky tape now you can see in this bottom corner where I used my low tack tape to hold my die still and as I removed it because it was brand new tape it's actually peeled off some but not all of the uh, gold there so I think I'm going to use that technique I'm going to have a play around with that and see uh, what effects we can get in a moment once we've got our cover completed. Now the other thing I noticed is that much like when you're die cutting foam, I always say when you run it through your machine, don't run it through twice. So sort of rock, take it through your rollers and then take it out of the machine because it will have cut through first time. Um, I didn't realise that with the same with this paper. So I ran it through my machine. I then came back again because I'm lazy and I don't want to lean over the machine. Put my plates back through and it, the paper, the cardstock had actually moved. So it's recut it again. Now, this is simply because of the, uh, I guess, the shininess of the, um, the paper there, the coating on the paper. It doesn't embed into the die in the way that cardstock would and kind of hold itself in place. So just so you're aware, when you are die cutting this through, don't do like me and run it through and then back again. Just through the once is absolutely fine. Now, I'll keep that piece that I've used there and I will reuse it. So just using red line tape here. Now, this is wonderful because you can actually even use this uh, or glue adhere this uh, fabric paper just as you would normal paper so I'm going to apply some wet glue although my nozzles a little bit dried up but I'm going to apply wet glue around the holes at the top there and they are for the elastic or in our case the twine so just around here and then I've put red liner tape just down the middle there I'm going to layer these two up one over the other Oops, to be careful because the red liner tape will grip straight away. There we go. So pressing that down, the red liner tape will hold everything in place. The glue will, will kind of grip as it dries. Then we've got our score line so we can now fold our book cover. Now you can fold this multiple times if you wish. You can have it as a really wide covered journal like so or you can do a little bit of concertina folding there if you prefer. I want to have this so it will actually stand on its own, so I'm going to keep it like so. But like I say, you can work at uh, folding these more sort of into each other if you want to. Now, as I've said already, this is quite a bright gold and I wanted to kind of dull it down a little bit to work with the color combination that I'm going to use. Now I've seen that we can actually remove a little bit of the um, color with some tape I'm going to do exactly that so I'm going to find myself I know somewhere within my stash I've got I think I've just found it actually here we go I've got some double-sided tape that's really quite wide so I'm going to peel off a big piece of this and screw it up give myself some texture and I'm going to see oh yes might have to do this now I'm just going to show you, can you see the gold on there and if I hold that at the right angle hopefully you can see 
the kind of the distressed look that we're getting there so let's just So I'm just going to work over this. This is going to take me a, just a few moments to go over because I'm using small bits. If you've got some anything like packing tape, I think that would probably work. Um, and just, like I say, just I'm screwing it up for texture. If you want to, and you want to add um, straight lines to give yourself like a striped effect, you could do that with some, some tape. I might do that around the edge, we'll see. But essentially I'm going to go all over the front cover. I don't think I'll worry about the back. I think I'll just concentrate on the front today or certainly that you guys can see because you don't want to watch me do too much. But hopefully you can start to see the texture that I'm getting there. And I haven't even screwed this up. Now you can you can scrunch this paper up and you can flatten it back out. You can wet it. You can completely and utterly soak it if you want to um, and then let it dry. And again, you can still die cut it and that will give it lots and lots of crinkles and such. Um, I know Helen Griffin loves to do that quite a lot. So I'm just going to go around giving this texture, lifting some of this gold up, and then we'll move on to uh, my favourite part, the kind of inky painty part. Okay, so distressing achieved there. My next stage that I thought I was going to try out was some paint. I'm actually going to put some acrylic paint on here and then buff it back and see what sort of effect, whether it kind of dulls down, gives it more of a shabby chic look to the cover or whether it just all wipes off. I like to experiment and I like to do it live. So let's get myself a blending mat to protect my surface. Pop that under here. Now this is one of the clear blending mats from Craft Stash. And I'm just going to put quite a lot of paint over here, first of all. Like I say, I'll, I'll find out what I'm doing and then I can repeat it for the back cover. Um, let's just take a dry paint brush and rub it all in. Now this could be a huge mistake. I could find out that this actually just completely paints over the uh, covering <laughs> and I can't get the gold back. Um, but like I say, I do like to experiment with you. So now I'm guessing that the paint's not going to dry very easily on the gold, or not very quickly. And I'm kind of hoping that it will dry quicker where I've removed the gold with the sticky tape, perhaps. So let's take a piece of kitchen towel. Let's just start experimenting in one area. Let's buff this off a little bit. We'll take the excess off first. Okay. Let's take it back a bit more. Oh, that has, I'm seeing some gold peek through. So I think I'm a little more um, <laughs> confident that we can get the gold back. Yes, exactly as I hoped would happen. It's actually sitting into uh, where I removed the, I'm hoping you can see that now a bit more. Where I removed the gold, it's actually sitting in those areas much, much better. It's almost made them a pale pink, actually. There we go. Because I did a long line across here. That's lovely. I really like that. So let's just take a look at the effect we've got. So we've still got the gold, but look how toned down it is. More, much more distressed compared to the gold we've got there. So isn't that lovely? I really like that effect, actually. It's really different. It's distressed, but you know me, I love my distressed looks. So I think I am going to just pop some gold over here. Now, I'm not going to have the texture on this side, of course. Getting it all over my fingers now. Because I didn't do the sticky tape over this side. That's fine, because this is just going to be the reverse. If you've watched my channel for a while, you'll know that we, we often get mucky, messy, I've got, I actually got, I like that. I like the distressing on the inside where the paint has transferred. There we go. Okay, so we've now got our, it actually looks very chic, doesn't it? Our um, much more toned down gold coating. So now it's actually time to decorate. And as I said, I'm going to be using this folder, this embossing folder. And I think I'm going to come back to that scrap of gold. You can see the difference between 
excuse the shine, but you can see the difference between what we had to start with and what we've got now. There we go, so there's that beautiful emboss that we've created. You can see the gorgeous emboss on the other side actually even better without the shine. So I'm going to go back, the reason I haven't washed my brush yet is because I'm actually going to put paint all over this, this time. Um, the white again, I'm being gentle, I don't want to depress any of the embossing. Now let me just take my craft mat, which I'll need to give it a wash anyway, so I don't get the table dirty. And I'll need more white paint. So like I say, this is just simply acrylic paint. It's the same paint as I use for my gel, gel printing, or jelly plate printing. I'm just using, I've got a brush that's, uh, it's called a mop brush actually, and it's just very long bristles on it, nice and loose, quite fluffy. It's not stiff in the slightest. It's just not going, it's not going to disrupt the surface of the paper at all. It's just going to get that paint into all the little nooks and crannies. Now this time, rather than taking a piece of dry kitchen towel and buffing off the paint, uh, because I've dried the paint, I'm going to take a wet wipe. Uh, or it could be a piece of wet kitchen towel, but you want to make sure it's quite firm. So I've wrapped it around my finger. And I'm just going to start brushing off on the surface of some of these areas. Now I'm not going looking to take a lot of the paint off, but I am looking at focusing more on the design. So brushing it over the top first of all, so I can start dampening some of that paint. Now this is a, a slower process. And we're not aiming for perfection here at all. Hopefully you can see that big flower just appearing there. And if I just run over the surface, I'm hoping to kind of capture the raised areas more than anywhere else, which is just, it's just working. There's some areas where I'm picking up the background, but I'm not too worried. I'm, you know, I'm looking for a nice, relaxed, shabby, chic look. There we go. So if you've got some areas that are a bit more solid, you can afford to press a bit harder with them. I'm just going, there we go. I think that's enough. I think if I go too far, so you can see that lovely design, like I say, nice and shabby, not, uh, not picking it out too much at all. And now I can cut this down. So I want to trim this down just to fit the front of my folder there like so. Now actually one thing I want to do, which I nearly forgot, is lift up these to this top and bottom edge. I forgot, I just added glue to that. So I'm going to gently lift those two up in the hope that they won't glue down too much because I have got from the textures floral folk art, flora and fauna die set, um, I have already pre-cut these lovely flowers. So I've done them in the colours as I described earlier, the uh, kind of burnt sienna colour, the navy and the blush pink. They're really pretty. I'm just going to put some of these, I think, at the top. And this is why I didn't want to glue down my panel. So at the top here, I'm just going to start positioning first. And I always start with my largest ones, kind of largest ones, build the shape and then I'll go in with my smaller ones and kind of define where everything's going and lift up this edge as well. Yeah, so they're still lifting up because that glue is taking a little while to dry. So first of all, the larger ones and then the, I'd say the next larger ones as such. So slightly smaller ones and we can overlap some of the stems here too. There we go. Now I have got additionals here, if a list smaller ones, if I want to use any as fillers, I think I'm quite happy at the moment with that. Now just to uh, kind of frame this as well, I've not glued those down for the moment because I do often come back and tweak for a little while. So I'm just going to sit them there for the moment. I'm going to take a piece of navy cardstock and just, this time I will use my trimmer, I think. I think I might, Let's do a torn edge, as straight as we possibly can. There we go. Yeah. And then I'm not releasing it from the bottom because I want to have, I want to have some um, cardstock to kind of work with nice and easily. So 
So place that into my trimmer. If I detach that from the bottom, then I'd have two strips and it would be much harder for me to do this and get them nice and straight. So there we go, like so. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is take my glue and I'm not going to actually remove the flowers, but I'm going to start try and start from the bottom the base ones and apply a blob of glue under each one so that just kind of requires me to press down with my thumb on the stems of the flowers and lift up the heads put some glue press that back down and because i'm going onto the the mirrored fabric paper or the gold fabric paper it's just going to take a little bit longer than usual i think to for that glue to dry now I've used the Textures Floral Folk Art Layering Floral Art Butterflies. It's a bit of a mouthful. But <laughs> and I've cut the layers from one of the butterflies from the same colour cardstocks as I used for the uh, flowers there. So I'm just going to place this butterfly in the centre here, like so. And I love this because the wings can then lift up if you want it dimensional. Over the top, I'm just going to add a nice bright white body for the butterfly. That just sort of echoes the white in the background. And I could leave it like this without a sentiment, but one thing I really, really love from Simply Made Crafts also is this stamp set. So uh, I'm going to just take the word memories, I think, and pop that across there. And then this will literally be my little notebook of memories. So something I'm regularly doing, um, just after telling you what I think I'm going to do, I changed my mind. So I actually realised I had the words just a note uh, on some pattern paper and I thought they would be even more fitting. So rather than the stamp set, I chose to use those instead. But there I've put my twine through the middle. I love this distressed look around the edge. I'm probably going to go in with the white pen and do some faux stitching around there too. Uh, just to make it look more purposeful but essentially my uh, travel notebooks or travel journals are going to slot in under the strings here I've just used twine but elastic's ideal because you can pull that really nice and taut and there I've got a wonderful album cover or notebook cover that I can use at any time and I'd be I'd be quite proud to take that out of my uh, handbag or wherever or sit on the train with it so I hope you've enjoyed this collaboration with textures and simply made crafts please don't forget to go ahead to Vicky's YouTube channel as well and welcome of course if you have joined me from there already um, to see what she made because I know it's going to be absolutely beautiful too don't forget you've only got this week um, that's the week commencing the 26th of June uh, 2023 in case you are watching this much later um, to use the code the collab code that's down in the description below so uh, thank you so much for joining me everybody um, please do give me a thumbs up and a subscribe and the same for Vicky also take care I'll see you again very soon